In this video, we are going to take a look at 3D Code's user interface, namely some of the changes that have occurred in 3D Code 2021, as well as given an overview of the layout of the UI for the benefit of new users. And I also want to talk about the customization capabilities so that users can tailor the overall layout to their own preferences and workflow. Let's get started now by focusing on the splash screen. You'll notice there are a number of new options, including the website access, the YouTube channel, the PBR materials library, and a new updates manager. You may not see a notification for a new build if it's a beta, but if it's noted as a stable build, then you should see a highlight here indicating that you have a new stable build that is available. You can also access it from the help menu under updates manager. So let me click on that and it will launch a browser which will show all the individual bills that are available up to this point. You can choose the latest one by clicking up here and then choosing to install this version or this build. When you're done, it will allow you to run 3D code. I also want to mention that the download and the installation process is also accelerated quite a bit. I'm here in the paint workspace. If you have ever been in 3D Coat 4.9, you saw a number of workspace tabs, but those have since been moved to this list menu. You can access them via hotkeys. And if you want to assign hotkeys to any menu item or tool, you can always hover over it and hit the end key on the keyboard and it will allow you to make the assignment. You can overwrite something that has been assigned to it previously, or you can stack the keys. Now for new users, I want to point out the overall layout of the user interface. You have your tool panel on the left hand side, just like in Photoshop, you have a lot of the same tools that you're used to there. You also happen to have different color swatches that you can quickly swap with the X key, just like you would in Photoshop. You can change your icons and text here. You can also temporarily hide the tool panel if you want and bring it back up by clicking this little triangle. It may be hard to see for the viewer, but it's there. You also happen to have a status bar here at the bottom. You can see the frames per second. If you're in a sculpt workspace especially, you can see the overall poly count and things of that sort. Next, you have the toolbar, which is much like what you have in Photoshop as well. Many of the same common parameters that you use throughout the application. These are context sensitive, as you'll see when I switch to different tools. The 2D texture editor is much like working in Photoshop. You can paint over your UV maps and you will see a live update to your model in the viewport. You can also change the viewport display to different modes like flat shade only, relief only, smooth shade, and roughness only. Let's go back to smooth shade. You can also go to the view menu and show whether sculpt objects are visible in this paint workspace. And the reason for that is this workspace shares tools with sculpt objects and paint objects. A paint object is something that is imported directly into this workspace through the file menu or via relevant options in the splash screen. Another way to create a paint object in 3D Coat is if you are in the Retopo workspace, for example, and you have retopologized a high poly sculpt, when you are ready to bake all that detail, you go to the bake menu, 3D Coat will create a paint object from it, and it will assign paint layers accordingly based on the baked high poly detail and shading information. Let's go to the sculpt workspace. The default layout is designed to put the most commonly used panels at your fingertips. However, you can customize it to fit your preference and workflow. If the default layout is not to your liking, you can not only customize it, but you can also enter a minimalist UI by hitting the tab key, which will toggle this mode on and off. If you assign hotkeys to different asset panels, you can bring those into the scene right away. I have a 3D connection device and it allows me to use a radial menu for each button. Let's say I want to bring up the brushes panel. It's going to bring it right to my cursor. If I scale an asset panel 
it will remember the scale each time I invoke it. I can test that by hitting the hotkey and see that it is indeed the same scale. Once I move my cursor outside the panel, it will disappear. If I want quick access to my tools, I can simply hit the spacebar. I can also drag and drop my most frequently used tools into the quick access row. Another way to access your most frequently or favorite tools is to add them to your presets panel, which allows you to make a full range of adjustments to any brush or tool and then store that as a preset for later usage. Again, if I want to bring it up over here, it's going to center on my brush. So you can set up presets in each individual room and just access your tools this way. And let's look at a layer panel. So if I'm working in the sculpt workspace or the paint workspace, I can access the layers here. I can hit the tab key to go back to the structured layout. One thing to take note of is in 3D Cook 2021, you now have this activity bar, which will give you very quick and extensive access to the different assets. You have your brushes, different environment maps for image-based lighting to light your scene. Another new option here is your navigation bar is no longer static. It's hidden until you move your cursor toward that navigation bar. So the closer you move it, the more visible it becomes. Let's now go to the camera menu and switch the viewport background from vertical gradient to environment map. It's a bit blurred by default, but this fourth icon, we can click and drag to scrub from left to right in order to blur it or sharpen it. So again, you have all the different options. You can hover over them and they will explain what they do. In your camera menu, you can create camera shortcuts. So if you are zoomed in on one part of a model, you can hit control up arrow and that's going to create a new camera shortcut. Let's go back to the paint workspace. So for example, if I am working in this particular region, I can hit control up arrow and that's going to create a new camera shortcut. Maybe now I'm working in this area, control up arrow, that will create a new one. And then maybe this section. Now what I can do is holding down the control key, I can hit the left or right arrow key to cycle between different views. When I save the application, it's going to save all of these stored camera shortcuts. There is also an important section at the bottom of the camera menu that lets the user choose the camera rotation center. When you are sculpting or texture painting, I would highly suggest using around current pick point, especially if you're using a 3D connection device, because this allows you to paint or sculpt while navigating around your model. Let me go ahead and do that now. I will choose current pick point or cursor location as the rotation center. So yeah, with your 3D connection device, you can just rotate around your brush. It's a very artist friendly way of working when you can paint or sculpt on your model while looking at it from different vantage points. And then there are situations where you would naturally want to remove perspective distortion by going to an orthographic view. In that case, you would want to switch your rotation center to something like world or object center. You may want to go to an orthographic view by clicking on this little cube that will put you in orthographic mode. Clicking it again will put you back into perspective, or you can hit the five key on the number pad and that will also toggle this. But what I want to mention is when you are in orthographic mode, it makes sense to switch to object bounding box. That way when you switch to different views, it will stay centered in a viewport. If you are still in current pick point, then it will make the model appear as if it's bouncing around and that's quite annoying, I'm sure. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Object bounding box. Let's hit shift A. So that's going to center all in the viewport. So I can go to my different side views. And it's always going to stay centered in a viewport. If I had around current pick point chosen as my rotation center, it would never stay centered in a viewport when switching views. Let's now switch to the topic of optimizing the UI to fit your preference and workflow. One way to condense the UI is to hide the tool panel on the left hand side by clicking this icon and just use the space bar to access our tools that way. Another thing that we can do is to remove all of these asset panels because they are now accessible through the activity bar, which will reveal them as you hover over the corresponding icon.
Our texture editor, yes, we probably want to keep that. Presets, you can access that with a hotkey or again through the activity bar. Let's stop the video right here and we will pick up in the next one where we are going to start focusing on the panels in the lower half of this column. We'll see you then.